the way I always look at like classic stuff is like what is the point of knowing all this stuff if you don't like challenge like the stories like if the stories are actually as good as people say they are then they should live up to you questioning them or challenging them or wondering why they were written that certain way yeah. and that's just how I feel about it is like I don't care if some stuffy little person who has way more student debt than me and is like telling me that I'm not allowed to think a thing and I'm like do you understand that you're telling me that I'm not allowed to have an opinion about a story that's not real do you know that you cannot go into my brain and tell me that I'm wrong it's literally impossible for you to do that this is my brain and this is your brain if you want to think that like uh that process Persephone's mom isn't like a bad mom that's fine but you understand that me thinking that does not in any way challenge what you think and that if you feel that insecure about that where you have to make me feel bad and try to like use white supremacy shit to make me an elitist shit to try to shame me into having a different opinion then you've already lost the argument yeah and so I might as well just walk away now and laugh at you because what like what i don't have any schooling at all and you can't come up with like anything else to say to me but but the books don't say that that's nice <laughs> like yeah. i don't care I well, don't. And you could go to one source in mythology you could go to like homer and it might say something different than like hesiod or um ovid and so none of the ancient authors agree which version is the truth then you know um mm -hmm. thinking that there's one objective truth is a christian lens because the Christians, they had their councils where they decided, okay, we're going to keep these books and we're going to throw the rest out. We're going to keep all of these stories and the, the cool, fun ones like Jesus playing with clay and re, re, um, what is it? reanimating it. <laughs> like they took all of that shit out. So, um, you know, you take out some of those things. You take out some cool details from some of other people's stories in Greek mythology. The funniest thing to me about all that is that there are so many different denominations of Christian churches. They all have the like the general text that is the same and they all interpret all of those stories completely differently. Wow. And so like, why do people think that the Greek and Roman and all these other like mythological stories that that also doesn't apply? Like right now on TikTok, there is probably 7,000 different like drama stories going on. Like I see stories sometimes and I'm like, I don't even know who you're talking about, <laughs> but you're, but like a Gen Z is upset about something like me trying to figure out who the watcher YouTube like channel was, was, was that whole thing. I have no, I had no idea who the people were before all of a sudden I started seeing videos about them. But part of like the internet is that though you'll like see somebody post something and they'll say one thing and then you'll, and then you'll see somebody else and be like, no, I don't agree with that. And they have a completely different interpretation to that same story or event or experience or whatever. And so like, this is literally the same thing. Like that's, that's just how human beings are. Everyone has their own interpretation for what happened. And so like, why would it, why wouldn't the Greek myth be the same thing? Like the person who wrote them may, might've felt one way, but that doesn't mean that everyone else has to. And the only way that I can ever, like I just think of Percy Jackson and that like 200 million books of this series has sold. It's uh, Rick Riordan just posted something on his, or his social media did anyway, a couple weeks ago, that the Percy Jackson books has been on the New York Times bestseller list for 13 years. That's ridiculous that it's been on the bestseller list for, I, it said just the weeks. And I was like, how many, how many years is that? And I like, and I like calculated it to figure out, it's just like, oh my God, like this, if, if the like classes, like elitists, whatever people on TikTok or anywhere else um, got their way, this book series would not exist because it definitely changes myths and definitely shows them in ways that aren't completely accurate to the original story. They're like Percy Jackson and all these kids do not exist in the other stories. The way that the gods are depicted are somewhat similar, but also can be very different. Like I have grudges against some Greek gods because of this story. And like, but this story has brought in so many people into wanting to learn about these stories and these myths and the Greek world and the Roman world. 
and all the other worlds that Rick Riordan does on his um, imprint. And so it's like, it's much better for it to be out there because that keeps these stories alive. If you don't make it possible for people to like, um, like connect with these characters, like you can make Poseidon just like a unemotional, like sea god guy who just kills everybody with the ocean and gives no fucks about anything else. But having him be this version of a sea god that shows up in a Hawaiian shirt and khaki shorts and like flip flops and tells Percy that he's his favorite child and eats blue birthday cake with him and and like try and like has those moments of like anger but also has moments where he shows that he also has other feelings makes him much more relatable and that makes you feel much more invested in all the other like it's so funny to me to think about the odyssey and the Iliad and all these other stories with Poseidon in it to imagine it being Percy's dad as opposed to just Poseidon this like unemotional Greek god and I just will never understand why people who spend all that time learning about these things would want would use all of that knowledge to like gatekeep it it just doesn't make sense like do you just want it to die because that's the fastest way for it to die because whether you like it or not book series and movies and tv shows like this are what keep these stories alive like i watched the mummy when i was like 14 15 because i loved ancient egyptian stories everyone every millennial is fucking obsessed with the mummy movies <laughs> for like for that reason um like it, because of that and it's like whether you like it or not those things like this make people feel invested in it and so what is what is more important for you to feel like you're right or for people to care about these things that you've spent your life learning about i just i will never understand why they feel the need to go out of the way to tell people that they're wrong i'm like you're literally like seeing somebody's like joy and like stomping on it why would you do that <laughs> a lot of the rewrites that people critique are very very like much coming from a place of trauma like saying medusa for example is um is given a level of protection via this power that she has you're a sexual assault victim would you not want to stop anybody in their tracks that's looking at you a way you don't like you know yeah, yeah like uh, ironically um i forget the percentage but a good a good amount of a, per a higher percentage of especially people that have experienced sexual abuse when they're children are overweight. And it's not because we like food a lot. It's because we don't want anyone to look at us. And when you're overweight, nobody looks at you. Like every time I've ever, I've lost weight a bunch of times in my life. Like, I don't know, remember how many times, three or four or five times at this point. And every single time I have, the thing that stops me is not like diet or food or whatever. It's when people start complimenting me on my body, even if they're not being, most of the time they're not being creepy. They're just saying like, hey, you look really nice. Or hey, those clothes you're wearing like fit you better. You look like, you know, nicer than you usually do. Immediately, it's like an alarm goes off in my head and I immediately start stop and stop exercising and stop eating like the food that I was even if I enjoyed it and go back to eating like food that I know will help me gain weight so that nobody looks at me like that anymore. And like if I could go out in public and and I knew that no one could look at me unless I wanted them to I would actually leave my house. <laughs> um, like that would be because I wouldn't be quite as scared or whatever anymore. And that would be really comforting. And so I guess that's like a really good example of like, before I think we were even friends, when I saw a video on here in like 2021 of somebody going out of their way to say that the Medusa myth that people, a lot of sexual assault people are getting Medusa tattoos. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's become like a thing where tattoo artists know that when a girl comes in and asks for a Medusa one that it's a, like a rape survivor. And this person went out of their way to make a video to specifically say that that story isn't right, that that's not right with the myth. And if you're using the Medusa myth as a rape survivor, you're basically doing it wrong and that you should stop. And it's not like a real myth. And I'm like, I never, never ever in my life ever want to be so caught up in pedanticness that I see people who have been raped sometimes as children 
use a story to make them feel safer and for you to be like, well, it's not in this book I read in college. So I'm going to go out of my way to shame you and make you feel like you're doing this wrong and that you're not allowed to use this story in the way that you want to. Like, what is, do you really feel the need to do that, to take that away from like rape survivors, especially child like rape survivors? Is that really necessary? It's not at all, but it's like, it's almost like exper an experiment in my mind that there are people who feel like that, that there are people who literally have that response. And it's like, what a, what did they do to you in college where you are so like stuck? Like I am autistic. <laughs> I understand what it's like when you have black and white thinking or you think you, these are the only two options. Like literally every therapy appointment is my therapist bringing up another option that legitimately has never entered my mind about a problem that I have in my life. And so I get it, but I'm also like, how do you, how do you, how do you, like record a video like this and post it. And there's nothing that goes off in your brain to be like, I'm being an asshole right now. <laughs> like, why, why, like Poseidon would come and like slap you in the face if we're doing, and, and he's the one that's doing the raping in that story. And he would still be like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, why are you, why are you going out of your way to do this to people like it's like what is it actually hurting like does it hurt you personally because if it does i don't know what to say to that besides like the asshole part of me is like go to therapy <laughs> i was very much in that mindset like back when i was a student and to give you an example of how many people feel this way within classics um yeah, yeah. like our our department's t-shirts one of the years that i was there it said the classics our classics the fact the ugh, they appropriated the the like the um what do you call it the marine corps thing the few the proud classic okay, yeah yeah and it had like a little motif of like a greek army on the back and it, it was a cool shirt design it really was mm -hmm. but that's kind of the attitude that you have because like not a lot of people continue on with it. If they choose it as their like foreign language, they usually stop after, you know, they fulfill their requirements. Um, and a lot of people don't take it seriously. And so you either have to tell yourself, oh, this is so important and people just don't get it. Or you have to like, you know, actually be like, okay, I want to help people get it. And not a lot of people choose the, I want to help people get it. They choose the, well, they just don't get it. And I'm better than them for getting it. Like they try to push anyone who's thinking about anything outside of like the box that they've decided is like acceptable for you <laughs> out the door so that you don't feel so you don't you just don't feel accepted you don't feel like people listen to you they make you feel like you're wrong and it's like you're just telling me that because you haven't thought of this before <laughs> like this is like where my where all my astrology placements come in of me being and my and also my horrible dad of being like you're just jealous that you didn't think of this first <laughs> like just admit it bro <laughs> like you're just mad that you've never considered this before and you're trying to make me feel bad because I'm smarter than you. I don't know why I would listen to you and think and like listen to your opinion, which is why I've never done like anything with school like that because I'm just like, that's the autistic like lack of um, hierarchies coming in of like, I genuinely don't know why I would listen to some dude's opinion purely just because he's been in school longer than me and he's older, like, so? <laughs> but that's very much what that world is, which is why it's so hard. It's like, they tell you that unless you have a degree in it, that your opinion doesn't matter. But also when you get that degree in it, they try to like punch out all of your unique, like individuality about the stories that you read out of you so that when you leave, you aren't somebody like Rick Riordan or all of the other stories that are out there about all the different myths and stuff to make them unique and make them your own. But it's like then, but it's just, I get so mad thinking about it because I'm like, I don't see the point in any of that. And I know that it's literally like, they just want everybody to agree. Yeah. 
Um, and like that's why it takes 500 years for people to realize that those two guys were not just friends they were gay and and all those other stories like that in in like the classics archaeology whatever world but it's just like if you guys let people in who don't want to assimilate things would change faster and more people would like it but i think when it comes down to it they like the idea that they're like special and that they know things that other people don't which is a very like elitist white supremacy thing and part of, like, the, part of the fun of all of this stuff to me at least is that of learning this stuff is to find ways to share it with people to make it um digestible for a larger audience because it's like well now that i know this stuff um let me share it with everybody because i don't have the same hang-ups of needing i don't feel like threatened by more people knowing about something that i know i feel the opposite way i like it when more people know what the hell i'm talking about <laughs> yeah and i want people to find comfort in stories whatever that may mean like i think the reason we tell stories as humans is to give people life examples of these are things to do or not to do or you know this is somebody else who has gone through something you've gone through like, if we're not getting that, then what's the fucking point? And to go back to Medusa, why would you want the version to be the truest version to be she was raped and then punished for being raped? Yeah. Like, you want that? You want that. <laughs> like, you want Poseidon, the god of every bit of water on this earth, to be someone who raped somebody and then got away with it? Like, rape someone and the person he raped got punished severely for the rest of her existence and she can never get away from him ever that's the story that you want instead of the idea that that did happen to her but she was able to get some power back even if you go with the idea that athena punished her but she sees the punishment as a good thing that is still something that happens when you go through that kind of stuff like there's I could find examples from my own life, but I don't want to right now, honestly. But there's so many things like that that happen where somebody thinks that they're doing something to you to hurt you, but you end up actually being fine with it because you take something out of it differently than they would. And so it's like, why would you want, why would you want that? Like, why would you want somebody to think about Poseidon like that? Or like, why would you want, why would you want someone to think about Athena that way? Like Athena is somebody who, punishes someone for getting raped yeah. and punishes the girl who got raped instead of the person the god who did it like, that doesn't make any sense yeah um and it's just like why you don't have to have them be like really bad people if you don't want or you can have them be bad people but have like actual consequences for their actions instead of them just like getting away with everything like we don't have to, it doesn't have to be like that. Like, this is your own world. You're writing these, like this, these people exist, but these are characters. You can make them be whoever you want to be. Why would you give them, this is like a whole sci-fi fantasy issue in general, but like, why would you give them the problems we have in our society? They don't have to be there. You don't have to give them those problems. You can decide in that world that they don't exist. Yeah. Like, just do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah. So the one video that I made about Gilmore Girls a long time ago where I pointed out that a lot of the people on the show are white women and people were like, well, if you go to Connecticut, I'm like, Stars Hollow is fictional. Stars Hollow is not a real town. It could have had any demographic makeup that, that Amy Sherman Palladino dreamed of. Yeah, that's like why uh, we're like in Percy Jackson that Annabeth is black. Athena will be black on the show. Her dad will be black. Um, I would dare anyone to tell Rick Riordan that that wasn't right. He might kill you. And like the other cast might do it too. Um, so it's like, and all the other characters on the show that are different, like Luke is is like half white, half Asian. Um, Chris Rodriguez in the show is actually like Latina. Like, um, and most like Dior is like Persian and black, I believe. And that's Clarice. Like she's a white girl with like blonde hair in the books. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Like Zeus is black in the show. Like, I don't know what they're going to do when they have Zeus again, because that actor died um, after they filmed uh, season one, which was sad. But like, 
they like they don't bat an eye at the idea of Zeus being a black man. Nobody questions him and his power because he's black. That doesn't even come into the idea in Percy Jackson. Are you kidding me? And so it feels silly to even imagine the characters talking about stuff like that. Like the only time that that stuff comes up is when they're around humans. Like when they're on the train and the police are like questioning them and giving Annabeth like a harder time than normal. You can read into that, that that's because she's the like a black character but like other than humans they don't come they don't have to deal with that same stuff because it's a magical world and they don't need to have those same problems in this magical world like yeah. hello and